officers, pastors, let them get in place for the procession. Lord, yeah, to the place, to the place where, I, where I first received you. We're going to be marching this morning. Take me back. Take me back. I worship you. I worship you. You are waymaker. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. That is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker. Promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. You are here. Hallelujah. Bending every heart. Every heart. We worship, I worship you. We worship you. I worship you. You are waymaker. Say, waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Somebody worship the way maker. If you know that he is the way maker and he can make a way where there seem to be no way, we exalt him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We're going to begin with our procession. As we lift up our voice and declare the Lord as our light and our salvation through the 27 Psalms. So let's join our offices together as we lift our voices in adoration to our King. Together, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, 
In this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidest, seek ye my face. My heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted, unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Our mission statement and pledge. We endeavor to love, obey, and serve our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Striving always to fulfill our purpose in making disciples of all men. For the advancing of the kingdom of God on earth. Under the direction and power of the Holy Ghost. And with an empowered people, we will foster unity, love, and fellowship within the apostolic community. In carrying out our mission, we pledge to build God's kingdom through the ministries of apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. As we seek to rescue our fellow men from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. To teach believers the word necessary for maturity, growth, and mission. And prepare believers for the glorious appearing of Jesus Christ. Somebody give God glory. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor. Tell them something nice. Let them know you're glad to see them. And especially if it's the first time you're seeing them, extend a very special welcome to them. Praise the name of the Lord. While we do that, we will be turning our hymnals to hymn 296 for opening song, Great is the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Great is the Lord, the Prince of Life and Glory. Great is the Lord.
I say, that shining in the sun. That shine it. Say he. One more time. Everybody sing. Great is the Lord. He is the light that shined in the darkness. He is the light and morning star. Somebody hail him. Somebody hail him. For he alone is king. Hallelujah. Sovereign God. What a mighty God we serve. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We're going to be going to our reading this morning. You may be seated. Coming to read for us is Elder Owen Brown. To read our Today's lesson from the book of Acts, chapter 2, 1 through 4, and 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 11. Our lesson comes to us from Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, and 1 Corinthians 12. 1 through 11. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 11. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that ye were Gentiles carried away with other dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now they, were, now they are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given the Spirit of the Spirit, the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. Verse 11. But all these work it, that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. This is the word of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's time for prayer. And we will be singing from the Pentecostal hymnal, hymn 211. Let the Holy Ghost come in. Praying for us this morning will be Pastor Bancroft Campbell from a small Eve, England. At the singing of the last verse, we invite everyone to stand as we get ready to pray. Him 2, 11. Would you be redeemed from 
every inborn sin have the holy spirit constantly within make the consecration trust in god and then let the holy ghost come in come in singing let the holy ghost come in come in say let the holy ghost come in come on in make the consecration trust in god and then let the holy ghost come in would you have the spirit in your heart to share would you be relieved from every doubt and fear make the consecration trust in god and then oh let the holy ghost come in come on in let the holy ghost come in come in let the holy ghost come in come on in let the creation trust in god and then let the holy ghost come in amen do you want the fire of god to fill your soul burn up all the dross and sanctify the whole make the consecration trust in god and then let the holy let the holy ghost come in amen Consecration, trust in God, and then let the Holy Ghost come in. Do you want the power to make you true and brave so that you can rescue those that Christ would save? Make the consecration, trust in God, and then let the Holy Ghost come in. Oh, let the Holy Ghost come in. Oh, let the Holy Ghost come in. Make the consecration, trust in God, and then let the Holy Ghost come in. Oh, let the Holy Ghost come in. Amen. Oh, let the Holy Ghost come in. The consecration, trust in God, and then let the Holy Ghost come in, come in. Right, right before Pastor Campbell prays, we have a special request coming in for Missionary Maureen Thomas, who has not been well and is in need of prayer. And so, as Pastor Campbell pray, we want to pray for Missionary. Marine Thomas, likewise, in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord. Let's bow our head as we give God the honor today and the glory as we approach the throne of God. It's a time of reflection. Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, here we are before you. We're standing in your presence and in the company of these believers today. You have kept us to thus far. You have sustained us by your grace. You have sustained us by your favor, Lord. You lift us up when we were down, Lord our God. And you give us strength that we could rise up today. We could gather in your house. We could lift our hands up, Lord. We will lift our voices, oh Lord, and we could rejoice in you today. Here we are, God, at this point in our worship. At this point in our gathering through the week, we have come thus far. And we are at the point of the conclusion of the matter. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. That was being with us, Lord Jesus, God. And today, God, we approach you, Lord our God, that you make your presence be felt. Tabernacle yourself with us today, God. Fill the hungry. Oh, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Satisfy the thirsty, Lord Jesus. Give strength to those who have none. 
on whose knees are feeble, on whose hands are hanging down, lift up, Lord Jesus. Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus, we pray today, God, for your leading. We pray, God, that we humble ourselves before you in even now. Lord Jesus, we reach out for those who are infirm, those who are kept back today, those who are laying in the bed of affliction. But God, you can reach them where they are. We have heard the prayer request this morning. Lord Jesus, you know the circumstances. Shataba, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, remove the cause and let the symptoms flee away. Bring your people to wholeness. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. You have promised to do it. And by your word today, we stand. And we believe God will perform a miracle in this gathering together for your people, Lord. You'll save our soul. Somebody will be filled today. Somebody will say, Lord, I yield, I yield. Somebody will run to the altar. Lord, our God, hallelujah. Surrender their life to you, Lord Jesus. We remember, Lord Jesus, the preacher today who would stand before this congregation. Lord, our God, as we make our preparation, Lord, our God, we are praying you are in the midst of the preparation. Lord, as we stand, Lord Jesus, in this podium, Lord, our God, you will reveal from heaven the mysteries, your mysteries, Lord Jesus, that today your people will be fed. Oh, Lord, our God, guide the administrator today of this service and inspire for your namesake, Lord Jesus, that the things that will be done, Lord Jesus, be according to your will. Reach out and bless now, God. And we know that those things, Lord Jesus, we have not considered, Lord Jesus, to put to you, but you know we need them. So we say, thank you, Holy Ghost, for providing it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Lord Jesus, um, oh hallelujah, bless God, yes God. We have not always thought about it, but Lord, you have thought about us. And we thank you for the victory, and we stand right now in the victory. And let the house say, Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Jesus, everyone. Praise God. At this time, we'll have the ministry of the sanctuary choir in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, you're excellent. Hallelujah. You are so excellent this morning. And so we lift up our holy hands in your presence and declare that you are excellent above everything. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Jesus. Excellent. Nobody like him. Nobody like him. Jesus. Excellent. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ. He is Lord. 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 He is risen from the dead. Worship him as Lord. He's my master. He's my savior. Holy Ghost. He's my Lord. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. And he is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, my God. God bless you. God bless you. Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. If you are the driver of a silver Honda CRV, License plate 6576 HV Honda CRV license plate 6576 HV. You need to attend to your vehicle urgently. He is Lord, He is Lord. Can we just close the distraction out for a second and focus on the fact that Jesus Christ is Lord of all? He who conquered death, hell, and the grave, he reigns king of kings. Lord of lords. Talk to my condo. Hallelujah. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me closely. We're talking about Jesus Christ. We're talking about Kushima Kandeosa. Hallelujah. Jesus. 
Jesus is Lord. Every power has got to be subjected to the higher power. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. He is Lord of all. He is Lord of all. My God, my God, every knee, every knee, if not now, later, but every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. Every tongue is either now or later, but every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord all to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. 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 Just for a few seconds, exalt him as Lord and Savior and God. He's my master. He's my Savior. He's my God. Hallelujah. Every knee, every knee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is Lord. He is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is Lord. He alone is Lord. Yes. Yes. He is King of Kings. Lord of Lords, conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. His name, his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated if you can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We honor the Lord this morning for he alone is God. Somebody on this side upstairs, give him a praise. Yes, yes. Somebody you know that he is Lord on that side in front of me on the balcony, go ahead and give him a praise. Somebody on my left, your right, you know that he is Lord, go ahead and give him a praise. My God, my God, he lifts you out of the dung here. He planted your feet on high ground. My gosh. Jesus. Hallelujah. Follow me, follow me. Mr. Music, I want you to follow me. I'll give you the direction and you'll follow at that point in time. I'm asking you please to follow me. Hallelujah. You're on this side. You're on this side. You're on this side. You're on this side. You know like nobody else does where God has brought you from. You know that you are not supposed to be here today. You know you should have been in your grave. Hallelujah. Holy God. Jesus. Hallelujah. You're on this side. You're on this side. You don't come out yet. But you know you're coming out. You're in the situation. You don't come out yet. But you know you're coming out. You know you're coming out. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. We 
without the music, without the music. Put your hands together. Yes. Accompany your clapping with a shout unto the Lord. Shout unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. King of kings, Lord of lords. King of kings, Lord of lords. He is king. He is Lord. He is king. And he is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. God Almighty, I love you. To our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. He who conquered death hell, and the grave. We honor him. We glorify him. We magnify him. We exalt Abu Kadekoshi and I. We exalt him. For he alone is God. My God and Savior Jesus. Hallelujah. To, to our Hallelujah. Jesus. To our presiding prelate of Jamaica and the West Indies, Bishop Devon Charles Brown and Lady Janet Brown, God bless you. Put your hands together for them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To Bishop Dexter Edmund, who is our speaker today, God bless you, sir. Good to have you. Put your hands together for him. Hallelujah to all of our pastors, overseers, Bishop Michael Lewis, to all my father's children, brothers and sisters, members of the body of Christ, to all of my father's children, visitors, those by way of internet, good to have you joining with us today. We are the Bethel United Church of Jesus Christ, and it's the last day of the feast in our 54th year of Holy Convocation. And God has been good to us. My God, under the theme, the Holy Ghost in the church, awakening our spiritual great gifts, manifesting God's power. My God, somebody shout a praise. I'm telling you, Jesus is in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Sabo Shama. Hallelujah. 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 To all of our visitors. For if there's a first time visitor in the house, could you just stand and wave your hand? Let us see you. First time visitor. First time visitor. Under the tent. God bless you. Yes. God bless. God bless. Good to have you. Good to have you. God bless you. God reach across to them. Extend an hand of greeting to them in the name of the Lord. We have among us also the great commission apostolics. Where are they? Okay, God bless you. God, okay, wonderful. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Good to have you joining with us today on this beautiful day in the courts and the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise God. We have Elder Philip. Okay. Elder Kevin Jr. from North Peel Community Church, Ontario, Ontario Canada. God bless you, sir. Good to have you with us today. That's Elder Kevin Jr. We also have Minister Stephen Vassal and Leota Vassal. Where are you? Where are the Vassals? Oh. Okay, God bless you. Good. One in the congregation, one in the... 
the organ. Yes, good to have you, sir. Good to have you with us in the name of the Lord. And we have all of the Bethel churches here this morning. All of the Bethel churches, as you see, Golden Hill, Ward Close, West Prospect, Barbary Hall, Darleston, Brownstown, Maypen, Hanslow, Pepper, Aleppo, Lionel Town, Daytona, Portmore, Bethel, South Camp Boy. Anybody? Stony Hill. Anybody get left out? Lloyd, St. Thomas. Yes. That's right. Heart Hill. Temple Hall. What town? All right. So here you go. Northern District. Southern District. Central District. Western District. Somebody shout glory. glory. Welcome, welcome, welcome. God bless you. Acknowledge one and all in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Praise God, praise God, praise God. All right, before we go to our next segment, we're going to have Minister Vassa to minister to us at this time in the name of Jesus. Go ahead, Minister Vassa, in the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Yeah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Yeah. Uh, thank you. <laughs> yes, I want to greet everyone in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to greet Bishop Brown, um, Bishop Edmund. And also Pastor um, <laughs> Lewis, yes, and I want to greet Bishop Barnes in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Down from his glory, ever living story, my God, man, Savior came. And Jesus was his name. Born in a manger to his own a stranger. A man of sorrows, tears and agony. Sunshine, my holy in all, the great creator became my savior, and all God's fullness dwelleth in him. His 
Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for that old rugged cross. Thank you for the hill called Mount Calvary. God bless you, Minister Vessel, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. As you continue to follow us, not only on YouTube, we also invite you to follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, Bethel United JA, and also on our WhatsApp channel. Continue to subscribe and follow us as we continue to lift up the name of Jesus. Just a few announcements. From this morning, we had our Sunday school competition. And the overall figure, the target was 1.5 million, was the set target for the Sunday school ministry. And we came away with 1.655230. Praise God. Put your hands together for the Sunday school department. Yes. So we have gone above and beyond that which was asked of us. Praise God. The most improved church is Lionel Town. Put your hands together for Lionel Town. God bless you, Lionel Town. God bless you. And I see a trophy here. I want, to be I want to believe it belongs to us. And when I say us, I mean Portmore. It doesn't say that, but I am here and I am seeing it and I am claiming it. So it says, New Converts, B-U-C-J-C, Apostolic, and that's National Sunday School Exam, April 2024, first place. Hallelujah. That's Portmore. That's Portmore. We took first place and second place in everything. Go ahead, give it up for Portmore. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's not only Portmore, more must clap, you know. Everybody else must clap. Bishop Brown, clap. That's right. Portmore, a big church. And the church say amen. <laughs> All right. God bless you. God bless you. We're going to have Minister Hilton to come and to outlay our national offices for us in the name of the Lord. So let me invite Minister Jean Hilton to come in Jesus Christ's name. Praise God. Praise God.
Shall we praise the name of Jesus? Give him another shout of praise. Come on, the excellent Jesus deserves every praise. Every praise is to our God. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. I am here this afternoon. I just want to greet the presence of the Lord who is in the house tonight, this day. Can you feel his presence? Mm -mm. Can you really feel him? If you have not felt him as yet, stick around. And I'm sure, I guarantee, you will feel him. You will feel his presence. I greet our presiding bishop for Jamaica and the West Indies, Bishop Devon Charles Brown and Lady Brown. Let's put our hands together for them. <laughs> to the presiding bishop for... The UK and Europe, the most honorable, <laughs> Dexter Edmund, praise God, praise God. And to all the other bishops, praise God to my own pastor in the house with us today, praise God, praise Jesus. And to all the pastors and workers in the kingdom of the Lord, it has been a few challenging years for us at the national level and so we had some persons who have been serving from post pre-covid and post covid and we want to just give god thanks for them because they have done an excellent come on you have to put your hands together for our national workers they are a very hard working team and they did well during the post COVID, the, during COVID and post COVID years. And so we really want to give God thanks for them. And this year we are turning out a new slate. Some might be returning, but I want to use this opportunity to say a big thank you to all those who worked during the past three years. Put your hands together for them. So on behalf of Bishop Brown and the National Ministerial Council, thank you, thank you, thank you. You've done an awesome job, and may the Lord continue to bless you. And with that, I will now present the national officers for the church year 20, 2024, 2025. So this is the board I am 2024 to 2025, I will tell you the board members first, and then I'll go to the others. So our honorary member, Bishop Ira D. Thompson, put your hands together for him. We cannot forget Bishop Thompson, and while he's alive, we will continue to honor him. Praise God. Board Chair, Presiding Bishop, Bishop Devon Charles Brown. <laughs> Bishop and Overseer for the Central District, Bishop Michael G. Lewis. Okay, let, can I thank you so much for cheering them on, but let me ask you just to hold the clap in until I'm finished. The Overseer for the Northern District, Overseer Everton Campbell. Overseer for the Southern District, Overseer Philip Dixon. For the, for the Northern District, Overseer, I called him already. For the Western District, Overseer Romano Willis. Other members are Pastor Winston Rose Green, a new member. Another new member, Evangelist Latoya Simba, representing Reem. Elder Trevor Ferguson, Elder Linton Snowball, Pastor Dormarine Lyle, yours truly, General Secretary, and another new member, Missionary Charmaine Prince. 
put your hands together for the National Ministerial Council members. And I will ask you if you would come to the front. Now, the National Department leaders for the 20, 24 to 26 years, church year, and we will be asking all the national leaders to serve for two years instead of one, at least two years. So these departmental leaders, you will be serving for the 20, 24, 25, and 20, 25, 26 church year, should the Lord tarries. For Sunday school, Missionary Marlene Hines, National Superintendent, Assistant Superintendent, Junior Missionary Jody Ann White, Secretary, Secretary Sister Michelle Drummond, Central District Superintendent, Missionary Paulette Watson, Southern District Superintendent, Sister Carrie Ann Williams, Northern District Superintendent, Sister Leone Wilson, and Western District Superintendent Evangelist Pauline Gooden. Put your hands together for them, our National Sunday School. For youth, the National President, Dr. Zara Oliphant, Central District President, Brother Duchesne Lawrence, Northern District President, Sister Patrice Edwards, Southern District President, Brother Joseph Snowball, and Western District President, Sister Tamika Scott. Put your hands together. The I left out the Assistant National President, Brother Dalmain Livingston. Are you all here? Or the persons I'm calling, are you here? Please come up, I'm not seeing. Okay, for Brother Woods Department, the National Brother Woods Department, National President, Brother Norman Thompson. Assistant President, Elder Mark Brown. Northern District President, Brother Kerome Powell. Southern District President, Minister Pat Roy Jones. And Western District President, Minister Dave Brown. And you would notice that there are some districts that are not yet filled, we will be working on those as the year progresses. Ladies Department, President Sister Tron Nelson, <laughs> Assistant President Evangelist Jessica Stewart, Evangelist Jessica Stewart-Jones, Secretary Sister Simone Wright, Central District President, Sister Charmaine Prince. Southern District Evangelist, Marcia Dixon. Northern District Missionary, Suzette Barrett. And Western District Missionary, Nordia Green. Put your hands together for the National <laughs> Ladies Department. <laughs> Family Life Ministry. Director, Missionary Kashana Ferguson. Assistant Director, Brother Norman Thompson. The Admin Assistant, Sister Talicia Mitchell Morgan. Central District Director, Missionary Karine Worrell. Northern District Director, Missionary Kathy Anman. Southern District Director, Sister Nakisha Green. And for the Western District, Missionary Sheila Fullwood. Put your hands together for the Family Life Ministries. 
New Converse Care, Director Elder Romana Willis, Assistant Director Missionary Joan McDonald, Coordinator for the Central District Elder Trevor Ferguson, for the Northern District Elder Everton Campbell, for the Southern District Elder Patrick Edwards, and the Admin Assistant Sister Andrea Brown Dennis. For REAM, that's the Regional Evangelism and Outreach Ministry, Director Evangelist Latoya Simbo, Assistant Director with Responsibility for Caribbean Evangelism, including Cuba, Elder Winston Rowe, Assistant Director with Responsibility for Home Bible Study and Special Projects, Minister Tyrell Morgan, Coordinator for the Central District, Brother Fred Frederick Darby. For the Northern District, Minister David Green. For the Southern District, Elder Carol Cole. And the Western District, Minister Dave Brown. The Admin Assistant, Sister Samantha Wright. The National Coordinator, her coordinator, Sister Nicola Wilson. The assistant coordinator, Missionary Marsha Edwards. And the assistant missionary secretary, Missionary Jean Williams. Our district elders, Elder Patrick Edwards, Northern District, Southern District Elder Ian Gowans, Central District Elder Winston Rose Green, and the District Secretaries, Northern Missionary Pauline Campbell, Southern Evangelist Marcia Dixon, and Central Mich Sister Michelle Drummond. Praise God. Put your hands together for them. Bethel. Bethel, Jamaica, the, I present to you all the national officers that will serve for the church years 2024, 2025 to 2026. Receive our island bishop at this time, presiding bishop in Jesus' name. On this day of Convocation 24, after much prayer and fasting and consultation, under God we have put together a cadre of members who I have no doubt under God will advance the kingdom at this time. I want you to prayerfully receive them and I ask that the pastors release them every now and then for national and regional duties. Will you stretch your hands towards them and say, God bless you. Now the departments or ministries are integral to the growth of the local church the district, as well as the organization. If we have non-performing leaders, it will stifle the growth of the church. Am I talking here? So we want to charge you on this the idea of convocation that you receive your appointment as a signal from God for you to contribute more to his kingdom. Say more. Say more. So I want to welcome you formally and may God bless you. You'd have noticed also that we are placing more emphasis this year. Amen on prayer. Yes, we have our prayer ministries and we have our monthly organization prayer meetings. 
uh, but we this year have chosen to select a leader for the national prayer ministry as well as a staff to support her because we are pushing prayer at every level of this organization. Amen, am I talking? The church must be a praying church, a fasting church, amen. Because uh, fasting prayer is um, on the pin, underpinning of the growth of the organization. We also will be placing more emphasis, we started last year, on family life. And you'll hear much more, beloved, I'm pregnant with this ministry. I am so moved. If I could serve, I would place me in the family life ministry. Let me contribute something to it. Amen. But from where I sit and the National Ministry Council, we will certainly provide the policy guidelines and the vision for this ministry so that the members will run with the vision. Amen. God bless you. Also, I want to signal to you that with regards to evangelism, this is the life of the church. If we don't grow, we will just be frustrated. Every church should grow. Hence, we are placing again emphasis on missions and evangelism. We also have created a new portfolio for Elder Winston Rowe. We have released him from the NMC to send him amen across the Caribbean to include Cuba. And I want you to pray much for him, to pray much uh, for him because he has a passion for growth and development. So he will be responsible for amen Caribbean evangelism to include Cuba. We also, through evangelism, will be, we have created a new portfolio also. We have brought back a former REAM director in the person of Minister Terrell Morgan. His responsibility for the next two years is two years is to one, amen, train every church in home Bible study, in old Bible study, home Bible study. That is a important amen part of church growth. So we welcome back, amen, uh, Minister Terrell Morgan, as well as he will be in charge of special projects. You may wonder what that means, Bishop. It, it means that we're going to be utilizing every facet of our development to reach souls. Uh, he will also be using uh, what I term social media evangelism. Um, we have a number of young people in our churches who are ready to use internet to win souls, to reach their peers here and abroad. So it will be developing a policy for that and it will drive in that aspect of evangelism. So I want to ask that we remain focused. We are about to enter into that period of planning. Each year following a convocation, we move into the planning period of the organization where we pray, we fast, and we go into our national retreat to, to hammer out, amen, to set objectives and to set targets. We're about to do that. So I ask you all to pray for us, amen, as we shut away and as ourselves we ask God to lead us as we seek to lead his people. So God bless you, members of the NMC. God bless you of the Department of Ministries. God bless you all. Maybe we'll stand, maybe we'll stand please. Please stand, everybody, as we pray. Amen for these workers. Hallelujah. All hands, workers, all hands. All hat ha kutu shababa sata. Say yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Say yes. Come across Dr. Zaro and hold Bishop Lewis' hands. Shaba. Praise God Almighty. As the leader of this awesome group, I'm going to stand down here also. I'm going to invite the presider, my brother, my friend, Bishop uh, Dex, able to come and pray for us, to pray for us, not to pray for them, but pray for us, including me. Amen. God bless you, Bishop Dexter. Let everyone bow your heads, please, as the bishop in 
joins the staff of leaders that will serve throughout this two-year period. And as they serve us, beloved, can we pray for them all now? Just focus our minds upon the great task that is ahead of them as we serve. Let's pray. Everyone that can pray, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give your name glory and we give your name honor because there is none like you. And so, Father, because we know we cannot do anything without you, we are totally and utterly dependent upon your leadership, upon your guidance. We pray now, Father, that you will refresh, revive, renew. You will give these persons, Lord God, from the bishop throughout this entire staff of leaders. You will give creativity. You will give them tenacity, increase their faithfulness and their love for your people. We thank you, Lord God, for the resources that will come. We thank you for the doors that will be open. We thank you for the many people that will be impacted and saved by the work of this national team. We ask now, Lord God, that you would pour upon them fresh oil, strengthen them in the time of adversity. And Lord God, give them the faith to know that as long as you are with them, then they are in the majority. We give your name praise. We present presiding Bishop Brown, Bishop Lewis, these district elders and overseers, uh, departmental heads, ministry directors, in every capacity, Lord God. We pray for them and cover them now. Anoint them with oil, Lord God, and let their cup run over as we give your name the glory and the praise always. We thank you for success in the kingdom. You said that you would be with us always even unto the end of the age and so father we take you at your word and we lean upon every promise you have made we ask these blessings in jesus name and let everybody who believes the word of the lord say amen can you give god praise for presiding bishop brown come on clap everybody and let's encourage their hearts as they serve in the name of jesus the lord bless you the Lord bless you. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Could you stand with me? It's offering time in the house of the Lord. Put your hands together. It's offering time in the house of the Lord. Has God blessed us? Has he been good to us? Praise God. We want to give back to the Lord, to the ministry here, as we continue to advance the kingdom of God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. All right, let me invite... Bishop Edmund to come at this time and he'll be giving instructions concerning this special offering in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord again, everyone. Just be seated just for a moment. Amen. I want you to send a message down your row. Tell everybody on your row, you look amazing. Some of you are not sure. No. Tell everybody on your row, you look amazing. You look amazing. You look absolutely amazing. It is my privilege today. I have several assignments. I've come to Jamaica to be a blessing and to help the bishop in whatever way I can in this convocation and coming a little while with the word. But it's my privilege today to stand and to receive I'm not going to collect an offering today. I'm going to receive it. We're going to receive a love offering for the presiding bishop of the churches here in Jamaica and in the West Indies. He is a man that is known to all of us. And if you love Bishop Brown and Lady Brown, clap your hands as fast and as loud as you can. Amen. I know intimately the work that goes in, the tremendous sacrifices that are made to lead not only here on the island of Jamaica, but throughout the Caribbean and the West Indies. And in this convocation, it is, I remember doing this 
Some years ago, Bishop Ira D. Thompson asked me to do this. And so let's give God praise to Bishop and Mother Thompson while we're here. This is something that is customary. It's not new. That on the Sunday of this holy convocation, someone would lead in the giving uh, for our presiding bishop. And so I'm going to ask those persons, especially those who have just stood at this altar. Amen. And we've just prayed for them. They have been appointed to offices. One thing that I've learned, that as you, as the Lord elevates you in ministry, so your giving must be elevated also. Oh, I don't hear anybody praising the Lord. The high you go, anyway. So I'm going to ask every national officer to get $2,000 in your hand, please. Every pastor, every overseer, every leader. We're going to show by our example. I was, Minister David McFarlane is a, is a friend, so I can, he berated me the other night that I came with U.S. dollars. Amen. But I came with, with, with pounds today. I came with pounds today because I want to be leading in this giving. Thank you so much. I want to lead in this giving. Amen. Uh, for the bishop. And I'm, I'm, I'm talking just to get, we're not going to take a long time to do this. Every pastor, every overseer, I want you to get $2,000 in your hand and move quickly. Come now, very quickly. I'm beginning this offering, sowing into this. Man, God bless you. Leaders of the church, come please. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you. Thank you. Come. And then we're going to ask the members of the church, please. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bro, thank you. God bless you all as you come. Amen. It's more blessed to give than it is to receive, and we're sowing into the life of these persons today, Bishop and Lady Brown. Others are coming. Thank you so much. It's wonderful not to be out here by myself. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. We've received from the leaders of the church where we are commanded to be the example to the flock. Somebody say amen. Come on, say amen a little louder than that. Thank you. Giving is a part of our worship. And the Lord does not mind who we pray second as long as we praise him first. And so the workman is worthy of his hire. It's a biblical principle that the man of God that labors in the word and doctrine is worthy of double honor. Now, those of you in here today, we're doing really well. You have $1,000 to sow into the life of the bishop. I want you to come as quickly as you can. Make your way up here. Move from the balcony. Move from the general congregation. You have $1,000 to come. Come. Yes, don't be hesitant. Come. I saw someone stand and then sit back down. Come. Come. The Lord, thank you. My sister from New York, God bless you. Thank you. Members of the UK delegation, helping your bishop today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you, Sister Davia. Thank you. Grace and peace be multiplied. Amen. I'm not going to promise you anything, but God is a faithful giver. Thank you so much, beloved. Thank you. Thank you so much. Anyone else coming? Amen. Thank you all. Thank you, beloved. We appreciate you. Amen. I didn't even start singing to get you to come because the choir is coming. Thank you very much. Thank you, Elder Barnett. Come. Thank you. You're still coming. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we appreciate you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Still come, beloved. Still come. Still come. Thank you so much for this. 
Amen. We appreciate you, Bishop and Lady Brown, appreciate you as we help them to do the work that the Lord has assigned for them to do here on the island of Jamaica and throughout the West Indies. God bless you. God bless you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. Give God praise for what the Lord has done through his people today in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, I'm going to ask God. Let me ask God's blessing. Stand. And then for those, you know, there was a man by the name of Nicodemus. He didn't want to come so everybody could see him. So he came by night. And so there may be some that have to give. All right. And so let's be a blessing today in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give, to sow into the life of your servants. And we pray now that as we have given, so you shall give back to us and give to them, pressed down, shaken together and running over. We give your name glory and praise. We ask these blessings now in Jesus' name. Let everybody who loves the Lord say amen. Say amen one more time. You're now in the hands of the ushers who are going to serve you as you come. The choir will be ministering for us in the name of the Lord Jesus. The Lord loves what kind of giver? He loves a cheerful giver. God bless you in Jesus' name.
Like Ceylon, Ceylon, Ceylon Ceylon, Ceylon The storms will soon be back Oh, the darkness will not always last
Somebody give him praise. Somebody give him glory. Hallelujah. God bless you. Remain standing. Remain standing. Those who are seated, let me invite you to stand in the name of the Lord. Right before a bishop comes, the ATM International presents Mastering Manwood Workshop. And this is for all men 18 to 80 years old who are seeking a high level of achievement in their life. This workshop is for you. The purpose is to empower men to grow and develop on their journey of manhood at any stage or season in their lives. This will be held at the port, at, in Portmore, Jamaica, at the Portmore Mall Town Plaza. That's Block D, Block 2, Sun, Saturday, sorry, Saturday, April 13, 2024. That's next Saturday. And this will be the facilitator will be our own Bishop-elect Alan Todd. So let us make note of this event and book now. All right, so please make note and make preparation for this powerful event for all men in Jesus' name. God bless you. It's my time to decrease and allow Bishop to come and increase at this point in time. Help me to welcome our presiding prelate, Bishop Devon Charles Brown. God bless him as he comes in Jesus' name. Put your hands together. Can we say hallelujah? Another hallelujah. It not, it's not just repeat what I asked you to do. I've asked you to worship. So because I stopped saying you should not stop it. Can we just spontaneously worship Jesus? Hallelujah. Lift up Jesus. Lift up Jesus. Yeah, lift up Jesus. Lift him higher. Shabak his name. Glorify Jesus. He's Lord. He's King of Kings. Come on, Bethel. Come on, Bethel. Come on, Bethel. Lift up El Bethel. The call of Bethel. Come on, lift up El Bethel. The call of Bethel. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just say the person beside you, say, neighbor, I love you. Just say, I love you. I love you, my brother. Oh, God bless you. you may be seated today. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Shabbat. Oh, yes. I feel a praise. Oh, I, I feel a praise. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Just wave your hands. Ooh, Baba. Wave your sanctified hands. Oh. Yes, Lord. Ha. Oh, God Almighty. Oh, God Almighty. Don't hold back today. Express release of praise in the house. Oh, thank you, Jesus. On this idea of convocation, our 54th Ole Convocation, I extend a pastoral welcome to the body of Christ. This is the General Assembly of Bethel in Jamaica. Come on, it's our General Assembly. Can we just clap our hands for this <laughs> assembly today as we close our local churches? and converge on this holy site.
Amen for our holy idea of convocation. Amen. Just a neighbor, I'm glad to see you. I'm glad to see you. Amen. Good to, it's not usual for us to see you all would see stolen folks and war clothes folks and South Crumb folks and Aleppo folks amen, in a different parishes. But today we are in one place and one accord to lift up Jesus. Hallelujah. So wipe the frown from your faces. The sadness from our faces and let us be joyful today and magnify God. Greetings everyone. Um, I have a little girl. Her name is Adore Eccleston and she's trying to find her mother. Um, mother? Her grandmother. Thank you. God bless you, Richard. Amen. Oh my. That's good. Isn't that good? Amen. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. So it's a high day of convocation 2024 and we thank God. Come and clap your hands for a moderator. Clap your hands for our moderator. Amen. He's not only a pastor, a teacher, a preacher, but he's also a worship leader. Come on, clap your hands for overseer Romano Willis. God bless you, sir. Amen. To my brother, Bishop Michael G. Lewis. Amen. God bless you, Brother Mike. Uh, to presider of UK and Europe, Bishop Dexter Hedman, clap your hands for him. We want to thank God. To all our overseers and pastors and to all the workers, to all the saints of the Most High God, to our visitors, amen. To those online, I greet you well in Jesus' precious name. Praise God. We came on here from Monday morning and it has been a wonderful time in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. I know you have been blessed. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Many came in without the Holy Ghost, but they are going home with the Holy Ghost. Come on, say hallelujah. Over 30 plus persons have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Come on, I think we all should stand and shout hallelujah. Come on church, stand and shout hallelujah. Stand and shout hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Born again. Birth in the kingdom of God. And we thank God. Amen for that experience. Praise God. Amen. God bless you all. I'd like to in a special way welcome the members from Buckley. Buckley in Christiana. Come on, clap your hands of Christiana. Some 15 persons came in from Christiana. Amen. You'll hear more about that, but they're about to they're about to receive fellowship with this organization. Come on, say something. Amen. Amen. So you'll hear more about that, and we thank God for these saints who came in. Amen. I've been to see them in February, and I'm looking forward to the fellowship. Amen. With Amen. Elder Barnaby, his wife, and the saints. Brother Barnaby is back with us also. Come on, say hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God Almighty. And we thank God for what he's doing at this time in the kingdom. Praise God Almighty. Amen. It's time for the word. Amen. But just allow me, uh, this altar is anointed. This altar is hot. This altar is on fire. Hashaba Kuseta. And I believe that many souls will birth today in God's kingdom. Amen. So welcome again and greetings. Uh, allow me just to take time out to say thanks to all the members that comprises the planning committee for convocation 2024. Clap your hands for them. Clap your hands for them. Um, after about three to four months of planning, and also coupled with fasting and prayer, because we don't enter any meeting with fasting and prayer. We fasted and we prayed. Amen. And we thank God through our convocation manager, Mr. Jean Hilton. Amen. Clap your hands for her. Amen. 
under God, we have executed the plans of this holy convocation. Clap your hands for uh, Minister Jean Hilton. And uh, the, come on, clap your hands stronger. Clap them louder. Amen. And the members of the planning committee, you know yourself, their, their names are in the booklet. You can, uh, you can see for yourself who they are. Thank God for the team leaders, all the members who work night and day online, offline. I just want to thank you very much for having availed yourselves again to serve. Bethel is the better because you've availed yourself to serve yet one more here. May God bless you and strengthen the country to serve God. Serve God by serving his people. Can we clap our hands again for the planning committee of convocation? As I speak, some are in the kitchen preparing dinner. Come and clap hands for those in the kitchen. Some are out doing parking duties. Clap your hands for them. Come on. Amen. Look at the tent. My God, the tent is crammed out there. Come and clap your hands for the members under the tent. Praise God. And those are children's church. Clap your hands for them also to my left. Thank you, Jesus. Just let me just greet especially the senior members among us. Am I talking here? Amen. I'm getting there now, so I've got to include myself. Amen. Sooner or later. Amen. But come on, these senior members, Mother Ivy Brooks, touching 89 years old. Come on. She's 89 and she's in the house. What did I say? What did, what did I say? What did I say? 89. Is now 89. 92 years old. Come on. Come on, clap your hands for Mother Abby Brooks. Come on. You know, we grew up as new converts here in her print and the broadcast. What's the fullest broadcast? Mother, the legendary Abby Brooks. Come on, clap your hands. For her. Amen. And is Mother Brown here from Golden Hill? Where's Mother Brown? Golden Hill? She it it four last week. Come on, clap your hands for her, Mother Brown from Golden Hill. And all the other senior members from our assemblies, clap your hands for them. We all the seniors just stand. All the seniors. Now in England, Bishop Bishop. Edmund called them the treasured saints. The treasured saints. So with all the treasured saints, the senior one just please stand. Stand, let's acknowledge you. Yes, come on, clap your hands for the senior members. Stand, senior members, clap your hands. Don't be ashamed. We treasure you. We thank God for your service. Thank God for your labor of love. Amen. God bless you. Clap your hands for them. We love them so much. Praise God. We also want to thank God for Sister Daniel Wright. Sister Daniel Wright, she came in from China. Daniel, are you in the house? Uh, Daniel, is she in the house? Amen. She's in the house. Praise God. She's in China working and she, along with others, they have to be underground, but they are evangelizing China. Amen. Come on, say something. Conducting prayer meeting. Amen. They've got to be wise though. How it is done because uh, they are intolerant of our faith, our belief. But thank God they are pushing the gospel. Come and clap hands for the saints who are in China being a witness. Amen for, for Jesus Christ. So God bless you. Amen. Sister Snowball, please go to Children's Church right away. You're needed by Children's Church. Sister Snowball. Amen. God bless you. It's time for the word. Say word. Say word. The choir is going back to do the ceremonic rendition. And while right after the choir is through singing, please stand and receive the day's speaker, our brother, the presider of Bethel United Church in UK and Europe, the pastor of our international mother church, the church at number two, Gibson Road. Gibson Road. God bless you. Stand and receive at that point in Jesus' name. Choir, minister, in Jesus' name.
family and people are determined to do it in the house Hallelujah. of the Lord. Everybody, let's testify. And ever and ever, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. of the Lord forever and ever. And so we thank you for your kindness towards us and Lord, I'd be so happy if you silenced my voice today and speak through me and bless your people so that all glory belongs to you. Thank you for saving, healing and delivering as we give your name the glory and the praise always in Jesus name. And let every grateful heart say amen. amen. Clap your hands and give God praise one Hallelujah. more time. Glory you may be God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We certainly are certainly grateful to the Lord for being here. And it's been a wonderful convocation, hasn't it? And we thank the Lord for those that have come. And we certainly appreciate Bishop Brown and Lady Brown for their uh, invitation for me and for others to come and I want to thank uh, Bishop Brown of your staff your team and whenever I come to Jamaica I, I'm always encouraged um, and I say like Paul said of the Corinthian Bethel Jamaica you come behind nobody you come behind nobody and I say that because we have been treated with such excellence and such kindness since we have come and we thank the Lord for you. And it is my hope that when you come to us, that you will receive the same as you always do. To Overseer Romano, our worship leader today, and to all of the overseers and pastors and, and, and kingdom workers, certainly to the pastor of this church, Bishop Lewis, and to each and every one, look at your neighbor and say, and you too. Because everyone is somebody in the house of the Lord. And, Thank God uh, for Overseer Campbell and, and Minister Sonia and the UK delegation who have come. And I hope they get an opportunity. I'll be leaving, but I hope they get an opportunity to vacation while they're here and enjoy this beautiful island that we call home. Amen. And for all of the saints, certainly my wife and others who are joining us, thank God for technology. Thank God for technology. And so the saints, I'm sure... Are, are joining us and you know Bethel we're part of one great family and uh, we stretch across the miles in many areas of the world and so as as we have come to your convocation you don't mind if I invite you to our convocation do you amen in July 24 we'd, we'd love for you to come to the United Kingdom and be with us for our 67th International Holy Convocation and we're looking forward to great things. I, you know, when I travel and, and I go to different places and I, I see and hear people excel in ministry, I'm always thinking to my mind, how can I get them to come to England? How can I get them? Because I think gifts have a need to be 
to be shared with everybody. But then as I was sat there today, the thought came to me, it won't be long till we're all going to a convocation that nobody has to wonder. And we will forever be with the Lord. Amen. Such great preaching and teaching we have heard this week. Certainly to all the vessels that the Lord has used to be a blessing. Seems challenging now to come on this last assignment for us to concretize in our minds what we are leaving convocation with. With all of the many words and teachings that we have enjoyed, the ministry of the choir and the praise team, the band, the ushers, everyone has served together. But in a few moments, we're going to be leaving and going back to our various districts and going back to our various churches and we will need to keep the fire burning. It is imperative that when convocation ends, that the convocation anointing doesn't end. That we take what we have gathered here in this convocation, we take what we've gathered here and we bring it back to our local assemblies. Amen? And so with all that we have heard this week, I want to just add to the catalog of messages and teachings from a great theme, an outstanding theme, the Holy Ghost in the church, an outstanding theme, and one that we would be well advised to keep locked up in our minds, that we never forget the importance of the Holy Spirit in the life of the church that we are totally dependent. I mean, the Lord has blessed us with tremendous gifts, but the greatest gift is the gift of the Holy Ghost. And it is important that we are ever dependent on Him. So I tossed around in my mind, asked the Lord, just kind of lent on Him a little bit, because I came with one message, you know, and that's the beauty of being invited. You have time to prepare, and so prepared some things, but then maybe sometime last night, the Lord, I love when the Lord just shifts us. And, um, and so I was able just to, and so I know that what I have not prepared, he will be able to bless. Romans chapter number eight, a very familiar passage of scripture. I will read it in your hearing. Very familiar passage of scripture, but I, my assignment today is for us to leave with the Holy Ghost in our hearts and with the power and in the power of his presence. Romans chapter 8, verse number 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, that love God. And to them that are the called according to his purpose. Read it one more time. And we know. Everybody say we know. That all things work together for good. To them that love God. And to them who are the called according to his purpose. The other night and throughout this meeting. We have tabernacled around the theme. And I feel led today to encourage you from this subject, the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of an overcomer. The ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of an overcomer. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, I'm a miracle. Tell them I'm a miracle. <laughs> you said it like you were unsure. Find somebody else and said, the only reason why I'm here today is because we serve a miracle work in God. If it, uh, can you find somebody else and said, if it had not been that the Lord was on my side, I don't know where I would be. So I've just come to celebrate today the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of an overcomer few introductory thoughts before we get into the substantive part of the message. 
Again, we want to reiterate again the importance of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer. That it is through spiritual growth and maturity that we become the sons of God that he has called us to be. My sisters, I don't want you to feel slighted in any way. Because it is only in the kingdom where a woman can celebrate being a son. You don't have, we don't have to have the conversation. Uh, it's just like it's only in the kingdom that a man can become pregnant. It's only in the kingdom things like that can happen. So when we talk about the sons of God, we're using that to describe the people of God who have attained a spiritual level of maturity and who stand in the presence of God as sons, understanding their rights and privileges as kingdom believers. I have been mesmerized by Galatians chapter 4 verse 1, Bishop, because it speaks to me and it says, an heir as long as he is a child differs not from a slave even though he is lord of all. That speaks to me because an heir which is the rightful owner of that which has been bequeathed if that individual does not have knowledge and insight into the power of the wealth that they have, they will continue thinking like a slave. And that is why every one of us, when we come into Christ, we must endeavor to grow spiritually. That is the, that is the challenge for the believer. It's the challenge for the pastor. It's the challenge for the teacher. We are called as the ministry gifts that Paul talks about in Ephesians chapter 4. All of us, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. Our role in the kingdom is to, in partnership with the Holy Spirit, edify and perfect or mature the people of God. So it is in, it's important, beloved ones, that we are able throughout our spiritual journey gauge and have an understanding that I am growing, that I am growing, that I am maturing, amen, that I am maturing. Some years ago in my first pastorate at the Abundant Life Community Church in Atlanta, Maryland, we were so eager to see people come to the Lord and there was a young lady that came, amen, she came to Christ and she had been a member of a girl gang. I never knew they existed over Siramana, the girl gangs. And she came and she gave her life to the Lord. And you know how it is when the new converts just get saved. They are so zealous after the things of God. And one day she came and she reported to me. She said, Pastor, I was in the, the supermarket today and somebody ran over my foot with the trolley and they didn't say sorry they just kept on moving and she said very boldly she said there was a time in my life let me try it over here uh, she said there was a time in my life if somebody had done that she would have had a fight right there in the store but she was celebrating the fact that she had what grown Oh, somebody help me look at your neighbor and said, I'm changing. And I'm changing because I'm growing. Is that right? And there will be change in the life of the believer because you and I know that where we began is not where we're going to finish. Just look at somebody and tell them, somebody didn't realize I'm in church. Just touch your neighbor and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will enjoy everything that God has for me to enjoy. It is important that we are able to gauge our growth. It is important that we are able to know for ourselves that something transformational is happening in me. Amen. Yes, other people must see it. But you must be able to identify for yourself something is happening in me. 
My joy is secure. My peace is concretized. And because we know that we are growing up in him, then we will know absolutely that God is on our side. According to Romans chapter 12 and verse number 1 and 2, well, I'll just go to verse number 2. It says, and be not conformed to this world but be transformed that word transform means supernaturally changed and then paul tells us how that supernatural change comes in the life of the believer it comes by the continual renewing of the mind remember now when we come to christ we are saved instantaneously we our names are written in the Lamb's book of life and we have a position in Christ but then we begin a journey and that journey is called discipleship soul winning can happen in a matter of moments you can be on a bus with somebody from I don't know halfway tree to downtown I don't know and you sat next to them and you witness to them and by the time they get off the bus they have been one to the Lord in a matter of minutes, they've opened up their hearts and they have received Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And they tell you, I want to be baptized. And you bring them to the church and they're baptized and they're filled with the Holy Ghost. That can happen in a matter of moments. But discipleship is going to take the rest of their lives. Learning how to be like Christ does not come overnight. It comes as a matter sometimes of trial and error. Sometimes learning to be like Christ, you take three steps forward and two steps back. But you have to have somebody who's going to hold your hand. A disciple then is an imitator. And a disciple is a learner. Beloved ones, we must not come to church and leave our minds at home. We must come because the word of God wants to get down in our minds gets in our spirit but for there to be a change that change must come to our mind and that change comes as a renewal of the mind comes from paul said it the continual renewing of the mind and that renewal of the mind comes from replacing old information with new information see that's the struggle of the holy spirit in the life of the believer the Holy Spirit, beloved ones, wants us to forget things that we're trying to hold on to. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. He's trying to get us to forget some things. And because we are so tempted sometime to hold on, and it, it, it could not be, maybe not necessarily, and it's certainly not said in criticism, because what we know is comfortable. Yes, what we know it is the unknown that is uncomfortable. Amen. What I know, I know. And I'm able to operate in that which I know. But then you are challenging me now, Holy Spirit, to think differently. You're challenging me now, amen, to not connect. And I, I have no reason to disbelieve that there are generational curses. I do believe that there's something in that. But the Holy Spirit comes and every time I lean on this generational curse, the Holy Spirit tells me, but you've been born again. I think I'm in the right church. No, no, you can't use that as a crutch anymore. Well, I'm sad because my mother, no, you can't use that anymore. You just have to deal with me because I am the way I am. It's a family. No, the Holy Spirit comes and says, you have been born again. The Holy Ghost got to remind you every time you're dealing and leaning on your home of origin issues and this is what's in my family and diabetes and all of these things are in my family. The Holy Ghost nudges you and said, but you are a new person in Christ. But you can only be new to the level of your thinking. The newness comes as a result of our thinking. And that is why the greatest change, I don't want to start any a riot here. The greatest change, beloved one, is not the outer change. No, that's not, I know that's the change that we look for. That, that's the change that we celebrate. 
What I used to do, I don't do anymore. Where I used to go, I don't go anymore. What I used to say, I don't say anymore. I know that's the great change, but you can have a new testimony, but still an old way of thinking. And until the thinking fires up your testimony, so it's not a matter of what I don't do anymore and what I used to do. It's a matter of how I used to think. I don't think like that anymore. Hallelujah. I don't think like that anymore. Touch your neighbor. I don't think like that anymore. Amen. I used to think everybody was out to get me. I don't think like that anymore. Thought everybody was trying to, uh, 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 everybody was jealous of me. Everybody jealous, jealous, jealous. Uh, nobody don't like me. Uh, amen. And you bring that thinking into the church. Hallelujah. And then you spend more time talking about church hurt than church love. Because what you have brought into the church is this sectarian thinking. Oh, I'm going I'm to mess with you today. Amen. And as long as the person you approve is singing, you're happy. Amen. As long as you have the, as long as your favorite preacher is preaching, you're going crazy. But if it's somebody you don't approve of, I'm going to preach to the balcony now. No, no. You just heard a little something about her. And now all of a sudden it's messed up your mind. Over something that might not even be true. And so now you're on this, this trajectory of dysfunction. Spiritual dysfunction. Because your mind is still locked in to old patterns of thinking. But I feel deliverance in the room today. This transformation comes as a result of the word of God. This is the word of C. Romano. I know you know this. This is the word. We bring people come into the church and we're teaching them everything. Teach them how to dress and how to sing and how to sway and how to do this and how. But the word. What is going to transform somebody's thinking is the word. So Romans 10, 17 tells us that faith comes by hearing. And this is why, Bishop, the challenge then is thrown at the feet of the preachers and teachers. What are we preaching and teaching? Mm, and I say this as a preacher. What is it that we're preaching and teaching? Because we are sometimes caught up in wanting to bring the holy convocation to a point of response. And the response will come. But what is the foundation of the response? The word of God. So the key to advancement in the kingdom. I, I won't be long. The key to advancement in the kingdom is knowledge of the word. Hosea 4 verse 6, the, the Lord speaks to the prophet, my people perish because they lack knowledge and kingdom knowledge is not just information. Kingdom knowledge comes as a result of revelation. Simon Barjona, flesh and blood, did not reveal this unto you, but my father, which is in heaven. So the kingdom believer is going to be a word compliant believer. Someone who bases their experience upon the word of God. It's not just the New Testament principle. The Lord speaks to Joshua in Joshua 1 verse 8 and says, him, says to him, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate upon it both day and night. And you will seek to do everything that lieth therein. And it will bring you good success. As long as you are governing yourself according to my word. It will be successful. We love beloved ones. We love his name. And we should. But God loves his word. And God does not operate outside of the jurisdiction of his word. Oh, I think I'm in the right place tonight. 
So God does not answer prayers that are based upon what I want. I'm trying to help us. God is not committed to answering prayers that you want. And so some of us are frustrated in our prayer life because we don't see God giving us what we want. God is not committed to giving us what we want. God is only committed to giving us what he says. And if what he says become what you want, you shall have whatsoever you desire. Somebody lift up your voice and shout hallelujah. So I've got to find out first what God has said. Then I've got to line up my desire based upon what he has said. Because God cannot deny his word. So as his word goes up before him, he responds to his word. We must become word compliant believers. We, we must be men and women that understand the word of God is vital, amen, to our spiritual growth and development. Now, let me say this. You're not, we're not just studying the word, beloved ones, to become Bible experts. Mm-mm. No, no, we're not studying the word just to become prolific Bible teachers. Just to have Bible knowledge and Bible information. You can have Bible knowledge and Bible information and still live defeated. Lord, help us. Because James tells us that we're not just to be hearers of the word, but we are to be doers of the word. Do I hear anybody? Um, so the written word does not become the living word until I apply the word. You see, that's where the joy comes in. When I see the word at work in my life, uh, when I see the word taking root in my life, I can say without a doubt the word is working because things are happening that I would not even expect somebody who loves God uh, say amen so this word compliant believer is the man or the woman that is guided by the word of God John 15 verse 7 if he abide in me and my word abide in you you shall ask whatsoever you will in other words uh, when you open your mouth his word is going to come back to him and when his word comes back to him his word is a blessing and releases blessings in my life here, here, here now what, what Jesus says in the parable of the sower we don't have time to get into it but beloved ones uh, may, let one of your takeaways from this convocation be go on and study the parable of the sower because that's a powerful kingdom parable it, amen amen be jesus you know i know we, we try to be deep but jesus said he said a man went out to sow <laughs> amen now he captures everybody's attention because uh, he's going to teach them kingdom principles but he said a man went out to sow <laughs> and as he went out to sow some seed <laughs> fell on the wayside that some seed fell on thorny ground and some seed were snatched up by the birds but he said some seed fell on good ground uh, and while I'm preaching I'm gonna prophesy and declare over your life uh, you are good ground today uh, oh come on somebody prophesy over your life. I'm good ground uh, and you see when the word of God comes into my heart uh, there will be a harvest uh, there will be a harvest who am I preaching to there will be a harvest uh, because I'm good ground God's word is not wasted in my life I'm not just rejoicing over the word I'm giving God praise for the miracle of the word being revealed in my life we not only preach the word we should pray the word we should speak the word I, I, I'm, I'm trying to behave you so uh, him open your mouth and speak the word centurion said to Jesus you don't have to come to my house I understand authority. I understand how this thing works. You don't have to come to my house. All you've got to do is speak 
the word on you and my servant will be healed because he is the word when Jesus speaks the word he speaks himself he sends himself into the situation and everything that is in him is in his word and so I don't need to have the miracle I just need to have a word because if I have a word the miracle is on the way 120 people lift up your voice and shout hallelujah I don't hear you shout that is why the most challenging time for you in convocation will not be when the choir is ministering it will not be when the priest or praise team is leading worship the most challenging time for the child of God overseer Ramona pray for me is how do I keep my mind on the word how do I rebuke distractions how do I get stuff out of my mind so I can give full attention to the word because his word is spirit and his word is life and if I can leave here with the word then victory shall be my legacy and this is what you've got to know you've got to know that we are word compliant I feel it now uh, Ezekiel 37 son of man can these dry bones live Lord you're the only one that knows then I tell you what you need to do seeing you don't know how to handle this situation open up your mouth and prophesy the dry bones hear the word I wonder who am I preaching to you have the power to speak to dead things dried up things unproductive things and say ye dry bones hear the word hear the word of the Lord thy word O Lord have I hid in my heart so that I might not sin against you thy word is a lamp and thy word is a light it is a meaning therefore that when you open the word you will see principles promises and prophecies that's why the word is full of principles the Bible is not just a spiritual book even though it is and primarily it is a spiritual book but the Word of God is also practical I wonder can I help you ah, there is a principle in the word to keep your mind full of peace beyond medication and I'm not telling you that some of us won't need medication but even when I take it I'm prophesying over my life I will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind and that's the challenge of the believer how do I keep my mind on Jesus when all hell is breaking loose in my life how do I keep my mind on the Lord it is in this my beloved brethren that every born again believer must know that the Holy Ghost in the church it's not just a corporate blessing but it's personal so much so that Paul writes to the church and saying not only is the Holy Ghost in the church but your body has become a church your body has become the dwelling place it has become the temple of the Holy Ghost so brother Edmund what are you saying remember what Deacon Downer taught me as a Sunday school teacher he said brother Dexter I was about eight or nine the Holy Ghost is Jesus living on the inside of you and let me see for those of you that keep calling the Holy Ghost an it and a what ah, no 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 you discredit the power of God the man or the woman that's filled with the Holy Ghost you got Jesus it's not a ghost it ain't no spirit you've got Jesus living on the inside and whatsoever is his is mine because the word told me that I'm an heir and I'm a joint heir with Jesus so if he got power I got power if he's got peace I got peace if he's got love I've got love because I've got Jesus 
Jesus. Shake somebody's hand and tell them I got Jesus living inside of me. Careful how you talk. Careful how you criticize. Careful how you backbite. Careful how you gossip. Because I got Jesus living on the inside of me. And it's Jesus on the inside working on the outside. I wish I could preach here. I'm not doing this by myself. Can I preach to somebody? It's not you. If it was left up to you, you would have left long time ago. But Jesus on the inside. Every time I want to run away, I got Jesus on the inside. Every time I feel like backsliding, I got Jesus. Jesus on the inside. So somebody look at you and said, how are you making it? Oh, just be honest. It's not you. I've got Jesus. What a way you're strong. I got Jesus living on the inside. What a way you're spiritual. I got Jesus living on the inside. What a way you can sing. I got Jesus living on the inside. What a way you can preach. It ain't me. It's not me. It's not me. It's not me. It's not me. I've got Jesus. Oh, you prayed for me. I had cancer. And you laid hands on me. And the doctor told me the tumor has gone. It's not me. It's Jesus living on the inside. The word compliant believer is the believer that understands the possibilities of kingdom living. They understand that one can chase a thousand, but two can put 10,000 to flight. The Holy Ghost then on the, on the ministry, there is a ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer. Number one, what are the ministries? Remember here, we're not here into pluralistic thinking or teaching. One Holy Spirit that is the spirit of Christ and the spirit of Christ comes with various ministries in John chapter 14 and verse number 26 he tells us that the Holy Spirit is a teacher that means beloved ones we must not be ignorant I feel it now you can't be in the church year after year after year not understanding about the devil the devil is real I wonder who can I preach to the devil is real and you've got to learn that the devil is your enemy and the Holy Spirit will teach you according to John 10 verse 10 that he comes to kill to steal and to destroy the devil don't care how high you are he don't care how low you are his determination is to destroy the child of God I feel a Gibson Road anointing now touch your neighbor said you got to know who you're up against because many of us are living a charmed life the, the devil is real and the devil is powerful but there's some things I've got to know that the word tells me first of all the devil is not omnipotent he is not all powerful can I preach a little more the devil is not omnipresent and the devil does not have omniscience only God is omnipotent and only God is has omniscience and only God has omnipresence so the chances are the devil can be messing with you and be messing with me at the same time but he has under his control demons and devils groupings of principalities that are assigned over families and cities I feel you now I feel you now there 
is an assignment, that demonic assignment. Two people stand at the altar and pledge their love one to the other and go on a beautiful honeymoon and love, 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 love. There is a demon in hell assigned to that marriage and that demon will do anything it has to do. But what I've got to know, I've got weapons and that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. I feel the Holy Ghost now. But they are mighty through God. The enemy comes against me, but I go against him because the weapons shake somebody's hand. I said, where is your weapon? Your weapon is not your tongue. The Bible tells me in Ephesians 6, above all, take the shield of faith where you're able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. But then above all, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. How many people in here, according to Hebrews 4 and 12, know that the word of God is quick? I feel like preaching. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. I wonder, are you in here? I want you to get the sword in your hand and tell the devil in the name of Jesus, the weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty. I feel the kingdom of Satan coming down right now. The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. For the dismantling, for the rendering powerless, no weapon. I need some help preaching. I need some help preaching. Look down your road and send no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. I wish I could talk here. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The Holy Spirit is a teacher. The, 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 the Holy Spirit, number two, the Holy Spirit, according to John 16, convicts. The Holy Spirit convicts. Uh-huh. Not the bishop. Because the Lord has given us a shepherd's heart because we, we're trying to save everybody. But the Holy Spirit convicts. Mm-hmm. You ought to have, have reached a place in your life where somebody shouldn't have to tell you that's inappropriate. Oh, I'm in the right church today. You should not need a missionary to tell you that's too tight. <laughs> no, 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 no. You should need an elder, say, young man. That's too bright for you to wear on the praise team. The Holy Ghost. Not when you put it on. The Holy Ghost while you are buying it. It says, watch here, watch here. You're going to lead worship in that? Is that what you're going to lead the holy saints of God in? And then even though you try it on. But the Holy Ghost. It's not just a tongue talker. Taps you on the shoulder. That's not for you. Cute, you know, it looked cute, good, but that's not for you. I need about 120 people to pray for Bishop right now. There ought to be some things that a Holy Ghost filled believer.
believer doesn't struggle with. You shouldn't, at this stage of your spiritual maturity, you shouldn't be struggling with forgiveness. All of the convocations you've been to, all of the tarrying services you've gone to, No, no, there ought to be some things a spirit-filled believer. No, 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 watch this. No, no, I'm going to admit something to you. See, I'm leaving in a few days. There are some people you have to make a decision to love them from afar. No. Oh, I just messed up, didn't I? No. There are some folk you got to say, you did it to me once. No, I'm not going to be your bully post for you just to beat up on me. I love myself enough to know that's not good for my mental health. And if it's not good for my mental health, it ain't good for my spirit. So you're on the other side of South Cameron. Praise the Lord. But I'm keeping on moving. Touch your name and said the Holy Ghost convicts. Convicts. Next time you pick up your phone to send gossip, the Holy Spirit convicts. No, I, I'm going to preach it. I'm going to preach it here. I preach it in England. I preach it anywhere. The next time your Holy Ghost feels self speaking in another tongue, wants to use your phone to desecrate and demean somebody. The Holy Ghost needs to tap you on the shoulder. And if the Holy Ghost ain't doing it, you need to ask yourself. I, uh. If you're good with that, if you're good with that, then I need you to come back to the altar and call on the name of Jesus. Touch your neighbor said he convicts. The Holy Spirit teaches. The Holy Spirit convicts. The Holy Spirit guides. He empowers. According to Acts 1 and 8, he empowers. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost comes. In Romans 8, 26, the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit intercedes. The Holy Spirit intercepts. And so when you are spirit-filled, if you're spirit-filled, you sure enough know you have the Holy Ghost in you. Nobody don't have to tell you. Lift up your voice and fill this room with a Holy Ghost praise right now. And shout hallelujah. But the spirit-filled believer will soon come to understand that there are experiences that you grow through. Not only are you going through them, but you're growing through them. Like the disciples, there will be time in the Christian journey when we wake Jesus up and ask him, carest thou not that we perish. And it is in these moments of Baker, Psalms 84 verse 6, the spirit-filled believer has the power to turn Baker into a well. When we go through, when the enemy has us penned in, and when criticism is flying and challenges are everywhere, there are five spiritual principles that I want you to leave convocation with that will help to make grow you through any and every situation. Are you ready? Number one, the love of God. You have got to remember always, no matter how broken, destitute, and cast down that you are, Jesus loves me. I know nobody may not tell you, but you've got to look in the mirror with tears in your eyes and say, listen, man, there's nothing you can do that would cause the love of God not to be over your life. Jeremiah said it like this. He loves us with an everlasting love. Is there anybody that has experienced the reckless love of God? 
because the, the God you experience uh, will be the God you tell the world about. <laughs> oh, let me tabernacle there. The God that you experience. Uh, if you experience a judging God uh, who is just in your life to break you down and to break you down into dust, uh, that's the God you're going to represent to the world. Uh, but if you are convinced of the love of God, uh, then no matter how broken and weak you are, uh, you will be able to speak back to yourself. Uh, Behold what manner of love uh, the Father has bestowed upon us uh, that we might be called the sons of God. Uh, help me remind every worshiper in South Cam Road, uh, tell them the Lord loves you. Uh, even when you don't love yourself. Uh, Jeremiah 31 3, I have loved you uh, with an everlasting love. Uh, therefore with loving kindness uh, have I drawn you. Uh, when we talk about the reckless love of God, uh, it means his love abandons all bias uh, and continues through our failures and our sins. Uh, he loves without a fear of being hurt. He loves and continues to love despite not being loved in return. His love without a care of being safe. He shows us this primarily through him hanging on the cross. Because when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. So when you are going through, you've got to sing, I love this song by Don Moen, Google it, go on YouTube, Moen says it this way, he never sleeps, he never slumbers, he never tires of hearing our praise, when we are weak, he becomes stronger, so rest in his love, and cast all of your cares on him, you've got to understand beloved, that he loves us with an everlasting love uh, through the storm and the rain. I'm not talking about the unsaved now. I'm not talking about the gang member now. I'm talking about the child of God. Uh, you're going to have to grow through. Uh, challenges come grow through. <laughs> While you're going through, grow through. <laughs> We've got to know that there will come a time you cannot answer every question and you cannot solve every issue. <laughs> you must do as God told the children of Israel. <laughs> Be still. <laughs> oh God, help me to preach this. <laughs> Just get a hold of somebody's hand <laughs> and squeeze it as tight as you can. <laughs> And say, be still, <laughs> and be still, <laughs> and know <laughs> that I <laughs> am God. <laughs> he may not see him working, <laughs> but beyond the sky, <laughs> beyond your present circumstances, <laughs> God <laughs> has told the devil, <laughs> you can go but so far. <laughs> Satan, <laughs> Satan has asked permission. <laughs> To see if he can uh, uh, sift you as a witch. Uh, but hear what Jesus says. Uh, I have prayed for you. Uh, and when you are converted. Uh, when you grow through what you go through. Uh, and you come out on the other side. Uh, I want you to come back. Uh, because there's always a season of comeback. Uh, the devil hates it. Uh, but the child of God. Uh, can always announce to the enemy. It's not only Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's not only the Terminator. I will be back. I may have to sit it out for a while. But look at me. I will. I want you to wake up every demon in hell. I mean shake hell real good. And said if God is for me. If God be for me. I will. You ain't preaching, you're not preaching. Uh, look at your neighbor. Uh, and said, I, uh, oh, you don't have to worry about this, brother. Uh, I, 
this is the passion and the courage of the believer because when the believer the spirit filled believer must not be ashamed of your tears it's not a lack of spirituality to hurt it's not a lack of spirituality to feel defeated you will cry sometime Jesus wept when Satan wants to destroy you he will isolate you and magnify everything around you so you will doubt the faithfulness of God but I've come to tell you that perfect love cast us out fear the same energy it takes to run away is the same energy it takes to run forward so forward still is Jehovah's will I feel a Holy Ghost convocation anointing can we take a praise break right here somebody lift up your voice These five principles will grow you through. Number one, the reckless love of God. Number two, the word of God. Romans 15 verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. You were not the first one to stare down a Red Sea. You were not the first one to get in a fiery furnace. You were not the first one to go to a grave. What the Bible tells us is that if he did it before, he will do it again. Number three, the ministry of strategic prayer. You've got to know how to pray with your eyes open, with your heart broken. If you don't know what to do, when words won't come out of your mouth just hold on to the horns of the altar and um, I wonder if there's anybody in here ever been through something so hellish that words can't come out of your mouth you just have to say oh you too deep you're too deep I, I, I want to find somebody. You couldn't find no two words to string together. You had to hold your belly and travail. But in that travail, God said, I will come through. Number four, no matter what happens to you, you've got to be joyful. Learn how to worship with a broken heart. Worship with tears in your eyes. Worship with pain in your heart. I hear Paul say to the Philippian church, Rejoice in the Lord, not in your situation. Rejoice in the Lord, not in your pain. Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Do you know why? I don't need a worship leader to tell me to stand on my feet. Oh, you're wondering why? I don't need a worship leader to tell me to lift up my hand because I've been through experiences when it was just me. I didn't have no choir. I didn't have no praise team. I had to learn to lift up my hands by myself and because I know I've learned him by myself I can praise him by myself you don't need me I'm sitting next to you but I can praise him let me see those who can praise him by yourself jump upon your feet and give him a I can praise him no, 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 no. You're praising him for Bishop. If you know you can praise him by yourself. Praise will graduate into worship which is principle number five. 
Principle number one, the reckless love of God. Principle number two, strategic prayer. Principle number two, the word of God. Principle number three, strategic prayer. Principle number four, maintain joy. I will bless the Lord at all times. Five, praise will graduate into worship. It is possible to pray, to worship God with the hope only of tomorrow. And so this leads us to the text. As I go to my seat, because the Holy Ghost believer will go through. I need you to help me today. The Holy Ghost believer might go through. The Holy Ghost believers sometimes will go through. It is a fact. You will go through. But when you're going through, you must grow through. And when you grow through, you've got to know who you are in God. That the devil... And I'm finishing. Oh, Baba Shandi. One of the cruel weapons of the enemy is to get you to, de to, to deny who you are in God. He questions your identity. No, you ain't the first one. Read Luke chapter 4. If you are if the devil know well and good he's the son of God but what the devil wants to do is question or for you to question who you are let me tell you about who you are you and I beloved ones have positional advantage yes Positional advantage. Write it down. This is the greatest knowledge that the spirit-filled believer must know. Who you are in Christ. You see, when you know who you are in Christ, that'll be the last day you worry who's waving when you're singing or who ain't waving. <laughs> You see, when you know who you are in Christ, it'll be the last Sunday you lose sleep about who ain't greeting you from who is greeting you. Because some people have certain Sundays to greet you. It used to mess up my mind, you know. Oh my God, I wonder what I've done. Why they don't like me? I wonder what I've done. It's an emoji. You ain't done nothing. They're still in process. Love them. Pray for them. But keep on moving. Your positional advantage calls into your life. Every promise that God has made for you. Over 8,000 promises God has made to his children in the word of God. Over 8,000. Not 800. 8,000 promises. Bishop Edmund, what is a promise? A promise is God's contractual agreement. It is his contractual arrangement. You see, when I fill you with the Holy Ghost, this is what I'm going to do for you. And if you believe me, I will open the windows of heaven and I will pour you out blessings you are unable to receive. Amen. Amen. But you see, in the blessings of God, we've got to learn how to be happy for other people. See, that's what's killing some of us right now. Beloved, when you learn that principle, let me see. I'm in Jamaica. Let, see, when you see, when you learn the principle of rejoicing when others rejoice, 
you're gone clear. I have seen, I have experienced this. God blessing somebody else with what I'm praying for. You, you live on, live on, live on. I have experienced God giving to somebody else what I'm waiting on. But what I have learned about that, that's a test. <laughs> that's a test. Touch your name and say, it's a test, it's a test. So I have learned to wrestle my feelings to the ground. There was a, there was a time in my life I struggled with this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you. So when they tell you, you say, Bishop already told us that. There was a time overseer, if I saw somebody with something and I liked it, let me see how I can get it. Let me see how I can get it. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you what I've learned. You see, when you get something that you're not ready for, you lose it. Oh, I just, I just came into somebody's room. So if I see you with the car that I'm praying for, Overseer Romano, what I have a tendency of doing now is to say, Rev, can I drive in your car? Let me practice how this feels. Let me get used to how a car like this smell. So when I get, when mine come, I don't have to act surprised. I can rejoice with my brother's blessing. I've also learned that if I'm struggling to be happy for somebody who God's blessing, there's something wrong. I need to grow. I need there's something in me. No. I'm, this is Brother Edmund's testimony. It is not yours. Why does it worry you so much when she sings? Why? Why does it bother you so much when he has the mic? I'm coming down your road. Why? What, what is it about her that, that irritates you so much? What was it about David that Saul hated? What was it about Joseph? Oh, I'm preaching to somebody right now. Your deliverance is coming right now. Your power is coming right now. What was it? You don't ask to be anointed. You're not even God saying, oh, give me an anointing, give me an anointing. God! Indiscriminately. You. You. You stop trying to explain it to people, stop trying to dumb down your anointing, walk in the power of God, and who don't like it? I wish you would shake somebody's hand and tell them, Sing! No, you're not doing it. Shake somebody's hand and say, Preach! Teach! I'm done. Sing! <laughs> and when you see they can't handle it, sing louder. Sing stronger. You see when, I'm in Jamaica, you see when they quail up and they can't handle the anointing? Go higher. 
go deeper and say to them like David said to Michael you ain't seen nothing things I'm talking about the spirit filled believer I'm not talking about somebody that just come to church and you just come on Sundays to tick a box I'm saying oh this is the knowledge that the Holy Ghost gives you all things work for my good I need you to lean on a neighbor and say all things You are the devil's worst nightmare. You, yes you. You are the devil's worst nightmare. Because you know that all things. So you worship, you praise, you dance, you run, you sing, you witness, you love, even though your heart is breaking, even though your soul is aching. Because you know. <laughs> Touch you people say, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm finished. Oh, touch somebody on the shoulder in front of you and say all things. You need, you're going to leave this convention knowing that all things. Out under the tent, tell somebody all things are working for my good. Brother Mitchell, many years ago, I bought a car. It wasn't a new car, it might have been third hand. And the gentleman who sold me the car, I said, Will this car last? I just needed it to last until I could afford a better car. He said, well, he's the man selling me the car, you know, maybe he knew. But he said something to me I'll never forget. He said, you're going to know how good this car is when it gets hot and when it gets cold. He said, oh, yes. We were living in Maryland at the time. In Maryland, the, the, the heat could get to 104. He said, you're going to learn about this car when it gets hot. And then in Maryland, in February, we can go down to minus 20 degrees with windshield. These are the extremities. As long as everything is all right, Dex, this car is going to be fine. But you see when it gets really hot... And when it gets really cold, that's when you're going to know about this car. I just come to frighten some devils today. You see your faith? You see, touch somebody say, your faith? What the devil didn't bargain on, 
is that through the storm, your faith was going to get stronger. And through the storm, your faith was going to be concretized. So somebody praise God. Let the devil hear you praise. Jump upon your feet. Bethel Convocation. 2024. Lift up your voice. I want you to leave out of your seat. Let me act like I'm at the Bethel Convention Center. Leave out of your seat and find two people. Wrap your arms around them and squeeze them tight. I said all things, all things, all things. Oh, don't stop. Find two other people. Find two other people. Somebody on the balcony, look down on the main level. And somebody on the main level, look up at the balcony and say all things. We are the victor. We 
Mighty God, we are full of joy. We wear the name of Jesus. Look at us. Do you want to joy? Hallelujah. Come on. The joy that we have. The world never give it to us. The joy. Look at me. I'm laughing. I'll get joy. I'll get joy. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm filled with joy. I'm filled with forgiveness. I'm filled with love. I'm filled with eternal life. The joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. Somebody else come. The joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. Somebody, somebody come. The world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. We met yesterday when we went prayer marching in Southside. If you are here, you are our special guest. And if you're not baptized, even come to the altar. We're going to pray for you because you came. Come. You were with us yesterday while we march in Southside. We saw persons receive the Holy Ghost on the road. We saw persons delivered. We saw demons come out of people's body. Mighty God. And we invited many to come. Is there one person here? I know you are here. I know you are here. Come. Let us pray for you. Come. If you don't have the Holy Ghost. If you're not filled with the Spirit of God. Speaking in tongues. Because the Spirit gave you the utterance. You can come to this altar. It's never too late to receive the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues. Come from outside. Come on, church. It's that oh my, I see somebody coming. Mighty God. I see somebody else coming. Look at them coming, Jesus. Yes, you're going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Let the church cry, Holy Ghost. Oh my God, you don't sound like you mean it. Say, Holy Ghost, cry. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a principle. It's a principle to receive the Holy Ghost. It's a principle. It's a principle. Mighty God. Somebody else. We got to close this 54th annual convention. We don't just want to close like that without giving somebody the opportunity to come into heaven, to step into the kingdom of God. Mighty God. We need it to come. We need it to come. We need it to come. My, I, I, I feel, you feel the spirit? I'm feeling the Holy Ghost. Oh my God. We're going to sing the song. The joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. The joy that I have. The world
One minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. Sapphire Ennis. Are you here? Sapphire Ennis. She's here to be baptized. Okay, praise God. Mighty God. Oh, somebody, somebody. Yeah. Hey, 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 that's right. The joy. The joy. Yeah, 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 yeah. The joy. The joy that I have. Somebody receive joy. The world. Receive joy. Did I give it to me? Receive joy. The joy. Joy. That I have. The world. Joy that I have. I wish I had worship. 